What's up? I'm Dan Fradenberg, and this is another Chance Encounter. Hey, what's up? I'm Dan Fradenberg. I'm a commercial real estate guy. I'm from the internet. We're seeing that uh, we're seeing more properties like this being built in front of a house. Gonna be torn down soon. I understand that there are power lines that are just kind of close. What's up again? This is Dan Fradenberg, and that there is a commercial real estate building. I'm joined today with Fabio Mendoza. How you doing, eh, Fabio? Good yourself. I can't complain, uh, and I'm actually – there's one thing you need to know, which is that today it's it's a little bit unusual, but my very favorite audience member joined us today. And why did our favorite audience member join us today? It's because this is a chance encounter where I interview commercial real estate syndicators, buyers, sellers, all that kind of stuff. Now, why do I do that? Well, part of it is for compliance. You can't even be meeting people in your sector without – building a prior substantive relationship and documenting it. So I have people on here and I say, hey, so what exactly is it that you do so that we cover all those bases? But before we get too in depth about that, uh, Fabio, do you want to uh, introduce yourself a little bit? So my name is Fabio Mendoza. I am a father of four beautiful children, three boys, one girl, as well as I have a beautiful spouse named Rebecca Seves. Um, I am new to the syndication world. I've been a 13 year accounting major mm -hmm. and I say came into this new syndication world, real estate as a new motivation for challenge for myself. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, uh, let's, uh, let's go through the different questions. Uh, we're going to go through the motivations first, but before that, I want to say, but wait, check your eight, uh, Fabio, I don't know if you can see through your camera and then down under your eight, it's the audience is five, but uh, maybe you can see if they hit the subscribe button and it's, and it's gray or if it's that ugly red, nah, I'm just kidding. But anyway, <laughs> the distinct motivations, the five distinct motivations. I've met a whole whack of syndicators now and I found that there are really five reasons why people are going to go through the hassle of uh, doing their next commercial acquisitions. And so I've distilled them to these five and I like to ask all my guests which one uh, basically describes them best. So the first one is preservation of purchasing power. And what that's all about is if somebody has a portfolio already of assets where the cash flow is what they live off of and they make ends meet, the only reason why they're going to make a new acquisition is to stave off inflation. So they're going to use their assets to make a new acquisition. And then that way the party keeps going because otherwise inflation will ruin it. So that's what some people are up to. That's not my uh, idea, my reason here. My reason is to trade time directly for wealth. Now, my background is in technology, and one of the problems of having one of those technology paychecks is that you're giving half of it to the government. And so me with my CRM background and my CRM agency, turning that into working with real estate uh, investors and then getting into it myself. Uh, the, the, the main thing for me is how I thought, how do I pivot so that I'm getting rewarded for my time in the form of deployed capital, AKA equity. So that's what I'm up to in the big scheme of things. Whereas most people are attracted originally to commercial real estate because they're trying to take control of their schedule. In other words, maybe they're fast tracking retirement, or maybe they just want to work fewer months per year or fewer weeks per month, something like that. So that's what some people are doing. But the next two groups, they're quite different in comparison. Like the really ambitious ones, they want to buy their entire hometown. They're looking for that generational wealth so that uh, to make sure their great grandchildren never have to hold a day job, that sort of thing. So these guys will hustle into their 90s. So they're great people to have on your team. 
uh, but they're a little bit different from this last group, which is some people have found a sector of society, or maybe it's animals or the environment or whatever it is, and they decided they wanted to make a really big impact. And if you're going to pull that off, you have to have a substantial financial nest egg, and that's why these people are making commercial acquisitions. So uh, Fabio, out of those five different motivations, like what combination of those really describes you best? Well, for the most of it, help people. I've always, myself, I own a farm and stuff, and I've always wanted for children and individuals to realize that it's not all coming from the store, that there is a lot of hard work that comes into getting everything that they consume into the store. But at the same time, I'm also trying to have a financial liberty to where I can travel, enjoy my family as well as everyone else in the world mm -hmm. and, and being in the accounting world for 13 years i know that as a job uh, nine to five gives you that stability but it doesn't give you that freedom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i love that that's a that's a really heartfelt answer and that's really fantastic but to lighten things up a little bit let's go to my tolerance for risk assessment question, which is a fill in the blanks question. There are many popular investment asset classes, but I think blank is too risky. What's too risky for you, Fabio? Stocks. Stocks, crypto, crypto. stocks and crypto. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, it's tough to, it's tough to take that uh, entire ride, especially uh, what's uh, happened recently. And I'm sure that's the same reason why you got into commercial real estate, even though you're doing uh, this, it's fairly new to you. But for the next segment here, this is more for your benefit than for my guest. I want to make sure that you can effectively communicate on the subject of commercial real estate. So if you go to ready for this, dandoesdeals.com, you can get your dandoesdeals.com commercial comp competency cube okay you can print it out and I don't even ask for your email address which from a marketing perspective is the dumbest thing you can possibly do but I want you to print this out so you can show it to your friends show it to your family all that kind of stuff because it really shows you the six different core roles in a commercial real estate deal and your ability to communicate is going to be your key to success so in every episode of chance encounters I go through all six sides to make sure that you know how my guest fits into these commercial deals so I'll do that by starting by talking about the repositioner. I sus I sus I'm suspicious that Fabio has some repositioner roles because of his accounting background, but let me tell you what a repositioner is. A repositioner is an actual acquisitions person, so that's a deal finder, and what they're doing with all this paperwork is when they're comparing all these different properties, they, the first thing they're doing is they're underwriting the deal. And what that means is they're doing the math, they're figuring out the actual expenses every single month and where the money's going and how much is coming in. And they're figuring out, first of all, is this building even making the amount of money that the broker and seller claim it is? That's what they're figuring out. But it's called a repositioner because they're trying to figure out how can they tweak how this business, that's what a commercial building really is, it's a business. They're thinking, how can I tweak this property so that I can find more upside? side. Now there are three main tools in the repositioner's tool belt to pull that off. The first one is more advantageous lending by going to different financiers, different banks, different lenders, and financiers are people who only deal with paper and money and nothing else. So if the repositioner can get a better loan, boom, there's some upside all baked into the deal. So that's good stuff. But all things equally, the next part that the repositioner is going to look for is the operations piece. Make it more efficient. Stop those Benjamins from going down those toilets. But there's more to operations. There's a lot to it than just uh, just unclogging toilets and collecting rents and mowing lawns and all that kind of fun stuff. For one, which is one of my fortes, I've got a, uh, a lot of marketing experience with help, which helps keep the vacancy rate low, but the automations and uh, social media and marketing, all that kind of stuff is what usually is the allure of my teams. But the repositioner will also take a look at the uh, units and figure how can they upgrade them? How can they do a value add or renovate the units? And then that way the next tenant will be happy to pay more than the previous one. But getting a team of contractors working on your building is very expensive. So the repositioner is going to need, well, at least if they're from the internet, because I'm from the internet, they're going to need a local 
They're going to need boots on the ground, somebody who can be there in an hour or so, and that's not going to be me because I'd be stuck at the airport, right? So this is the ownership team, and there are some financiers that would end up owning or you know, making the deal happen. But when a repositioner turns around to the financiers and says, hey, I got this you know, 350 unit apartment complex and to pick it up, I need tens of millions of dollars. So you don't happen to have say tens of millions of dollars, do you? And the financier is gonna have one question on their mind that hasn't been answered yet, which is, who is your sponsor KP? Who's your KP? What's that all about? Well, I know that a lot of coaching programs kind of gloss over this part, but if you wanna be eligible for a commercial loan, somebody in the fold has to already own a similar asset. So if you wanna take over a 350 unit apartment complex with you and your buddies, you're gonna need somebody who already owns a similar asset or you're gonna have to come up with all of the money. But if you have the sponsor, all these different uh, pieces in place, you still need a certain amount of liquidity and you also need a balance sheet of at least the amount of the loan. But if you do all that, you got yourself a commercial real estate deal. So Fabio, have I got, uh, have I got it right as far as what your core competencies are that you're most likely to contribute? It has to do with your accounting background and, uh, and underwriting skills or, or where else? would you uh, uh, put yourself, what other sides of the dive do you think you cover? I think uh, repositioning is pretty much correct. And so mm-hmm. that's where I think you're very correct on what you just said. Okay, sweet then. So then the next question then, it has to do with your buy box. And when commercial investors are talking to each other and say, hey, what's your buy box or your ideal property? They're asking for three things. First one, geography. So which states, which counties, possibly even which neighborhoods, okay? So that's the first one. Second one, size. And the way that we do that in multifamily is we go off a unit count. And the reason for that is because someone who's interested in like 15 units will be different from a team that's doing 50 units, which will be different from a team that does 500, okay? So that size matters. Now, the third thing that you need to know is the class, okay? There's two meanings of the word class and both of them count. The first one is the condition of the building. So is it old and beat up or is it at least up to date, but is no frills or is it brand? brand new with all the amenities and bells and whistles and all that kind of stuff. So that's one meaning of class. But the other meaning of class, it has to do with the area where the property is located. So what's the crime rate like? And what's the school district like around there? But both of them use the same rating system as in grade school. So it's A plus, A, A minus, B plus, and so on. So Fabio, as far as properties that uh, that sound good for you, uh, what, what are you looking for? these days so geographically let's go um i want to say what i'm looking for is c to b plus properties and b and a plus areas for value add and the markets mostly that i'm looking into is dallas fort worth south houston amarillo and lubbock texas and as well as Boise, Meridian, Nampa area, because that's where I'm closer to. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, awesome, awesome. So that's the uh, that's the buy box. You said the class and the unit count, all that uh, geography. That's the good stuff. So the next question has to do with who you're disproportionately uh, well suited to help. So the nice thing about commercial real estate is even when you're first getting started, everybody is so helpful because they want to put together a team, right? But even though we like to stay all positive, we're still better suited to help some people more than others. Me personally, because of my mass marketing and scaling background, the sponsors and KPs are the people who I'm generally looking out for. But um, uh, Fabio, I don't know if you have any 506B deals going on. If you do, don't entice any investors. So if you have like a donut or something, don't wave it in front of the camera, that'd be bad. But uh, on the diet, like it sounds to me, like um, you, you'd be looking for operators, uh, maybe some other repositioners and maybe some beginners or something like that. Uh, like who, who, are you, who are you best suited to help? So I did miss one thing on the last question. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the unit count, mm-hmm. I would preferably be 50 plus, mm-hmm. but I also entertain 20 plus. Okay. Just an FYI. Okay. Sorry. Um, now, 
No, you're fine. Yeah. Uh, who I'm most suitable to help is I can pretty much in my area, I have really good communication with a lot of contractors and a lot of finance companies. Mm -hmm. um, so that I can help with. Um, my, like you said, my biggest value add is a lot of my underwriting and understanding of the marketing. So pretty much I can help most of anyone on the cube, but primarily contractors and finding um, financing is something I can really help with. All right, beautiful. And uh, uh, you and I met each other through a uh, Zoom meetup uh, for multifamily syndicators. Uh, and LinkedIn is a great way to reach me because I have a distinct last name there. Uh, and this QR code, if you scan that with your phone, that goes to the FAQs page of 506 BME, which is the documentation service that I offer for uh, for basically for CRMs, keeping track of your investors. But uh, uh, how about you, Fabio? What's the, what's the best way to reach you? So I can be reached at my email at Favio, F-A-V-I-O, at 6mdriverealestateinvesting.com. Also at 6mdriverealestateinvesting.com. That's my website. Uh, LinkedIn, you can look me up by my name, Favio Mendoza. So Favio is F-A-V-I-O, not mistakenly with the blonde-haired Italian dude or something like that, that I can't believe it's not butter. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's right. Yeah. The, the lightness, it's the glasses. That's the big difference, right? It, it's <laughs> otherwise, you know, like spitting image, but that reminds me, there's one other thing that I have to, uh, I have to mention, and I just thought of a different way to approach it, which is if you are having some searing pains in your eyeballs, migraine-like systems, or possibly brain damage, it might be because under my hand, there's a big, ugly red button, and it it's awful, okay? And if you click on it, it turns gray, and that's free, and that does not cause the awful searing pain, migraine, you know, nausea, all that. It, it's bad. And especially if you've got, like, someone who's, like, Gen Z in the house, like, if they see the red button, they'll be like, I thought I knew you, okay? And you don't want that. So make sure you hit that button. All jokes aside, all it means is that uh, uh, my list, uh, my videos might show up on your list of suggestions. The real reason I want you to do it is so that YouTube pays for these videos instead of me. But I just appreciate the fact that you spent this time with me. Just like Fabio, I really appreciate you spending the time with me. This has been great getting to know you a little bit. Same here, Dan. Awesome. Thanks. Make sure you 506 B me. Any syndicators, make sure you 506 B me. Oh, hey, yeah, here's my code. You got your QR code scanner. Okay, yeah, oh, yeah, just hold it right in the square there. Okay, cool. And now you hit open in browser. Okay. Okay. Are you already logged into 506 BB? Yes. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, so there's my video. So now I'm already on your watch list. So when you get back to your hotel, you can find out what my core competencies are and my level of sophistication. Sound good? Yeah. I love your hat. Real estate's a scam. That's really funny. Yeah. Nice meeting you. You too. 506 B me everybody.